everyone. I'm Stacy, the 911 Stitcher. Welcome to my channel about cross stitch. Today is Thursday, April 15th, 2021, and it's video 61. So a big hello to you guys. I've taken a couple of weeks off of filming floss tubes. And as you guys know, I had an extensive surgery, which I'll talk about in a few minutes. But if you're here for cross stitching news, you've come to the right place. I show new releases at the end of the video. I've got some updates on cross stitch that I have been working on. I have some new charts that I've bought and a project bag I just got that's so pretty that someone uh, made for me. So I will show all of that in just a few minutes. So as you know, a couple of weeks ago I took off. Um, I had an extensive, I'll go back a little bit further in case you're new to my channel. I had an injury several years ago with the Los Angeles Police Department that uh, ended my career as a police officer and I have had 11 surgeries since then. And last year they did an extensive surgery where they removed all of my screws and um, buttons and I had an artificial ligament graft. They removed that. They did bone grafts on the, the holes in the tibia and the femur. And once those grafts healed, the plan was to put everything back in. So that's what they did. <laughs> so a couple weeks ago, I had reconstructive surgery. They gave me new screws, new buttons, and a beautiful brand new donated um, ligament transplant graft. So I... I'm tired, you guys. I tell you what, it's really, it's been a hard couple of weeks. I have not been sleeping at night. You can tell by my eyes probably, <laughs> a little saggy. So one of the things that I'm kind of going back and forth with as far as my recovery goes is whether or not I want to write a letter to the family that donated. When you, when as you all know, when you pass away or when someone passes away, you are given the option to donate organs and tissue or bones. And when my dad passed away, that was a very hard decision for me to make because I had massive grief and you're being contacted by someone asking you to donate organs, which is a very uncomfortable position that I was in, which most people are, everybody's in eventually. And um, now that I am a recipient, three times, a three-time recipient of bone and connective tissue donation, I'm in the position of whether I want to write a letter to the family that donated. And now I have not done that for the last two transplants that I've had. And now I'm, a, I'm now in the position again, and I've received my letter. It says your recent surgery included an allograft, a gift of donated bone or connective tissue. Allograft procedures would not be possible without the final act of generosity and kindness of donors and the support of their families. Now, how would I feel if I donated organs and received letters from the people that received them? I mean, that would just be amazing. So I'm really thinking about writing a letter of thanks to the family and um, sending my appreciation and letting them know that how thankful I am for the bone and connective tissue that I received from their family member. It's really something special. And like I said, it's something I haven't done before because I've give, been given the opportunity. I've never done it, but I think I will do it this time. And so that's a little bit of a life update from me. Deuce is doing better. He was hospitalized a couple of nights. On Friday night, he was hospitalized with a high fever. He's doing awesome. It was an infection, high stress, and he's doing great. But I do feel good enough to do a video. So I've got some great stuff to show you. And I hope you'll stick around to see the new releases at the end. There's some really neat ones. And I have been able to stitch in the last week. The first couple weeks I was not able to stitch because I like to look through a magnifier and it made me dizzy, it just made me sick. So I crocheted, I worked on some English paper piecing that I'll talk about a little bit later. But I do have some progress on some really fun cross stitching whips work in progress that I'll show. There's a couple of cross stitch news that I'd like to talk to you guys about. One of them, if you watch Emily C, she's another YouTuber and she's a social worker. So like me, in my career, I spent a lot of time with victims, children of neglect and abuse. And I enjoyed being with the kids. I enjoyed being with the families and, and helping. Helping was what I did my whole life. 
helping other people. And I miss that. That's the one thing I do miss about it. And if you're not familiar with my history, after I got hurt, I was a 911 dispatcher for emergency services in the city of Anaheim, which is a huge city in Southern California. So a little background about me. Now you know why I'm called 911 Stitcher and <laughs> why I've had so many surgeries since I since I did get hurt with the Los Angeles Police Department. But I do miss working with the kids. I, work, I miss going to the schools. So anyway, I wanted to tell you just quickly about a project that Emily C. is working on. She does it once a year, I believe. It is an Adopt-A-Duck duck derby. Now these are rubber ducks that they release, I believe, in a river or a lake nearby in the state of Georgia where she's from. All money goes towards the children and families who have been victims of, of abuse and neglect. So even if you donated $5 for a rubber duck, one duck is is $5 that you've donated and it goes places. So please don't think that one single duck purchase doesn't do anything. They also have other things. They have a quack pack, which I believe is what I got. You get, did I get that or the Quaker's Dozen? Oh, I got Quaker's Dozen. So $50, you get an extra free duck. Free duck. So I can't remember which pack I got. I think I got the Dozen. Either way, your donation goes to Advocates for Children. And I'm going to post Emily's email down below. If you make a donation, send your receipt to Emily because... She is having giveaways, cross-stitch giveaways that are fantastic. So send her a copy of your receipt. That's what I did. And follow Emily's last couple of videos because she will talk about the Duck Derby and Advocates for Children. They're in the beginning of her video. So Emily C is her floss tube. And on Instagram, she is Eclectic Possessions. I'm going to put both those down below. The last day to adopt is Saturday, May 15th at noon Eastern time, I believe. Okay, other cross-stitch news. I will be participating with Brenda and Laura on a weekend stitch along. Now, this is just this is just for fun in your own home. It's not like it's a retreat or anything, which I wish. Wouldn't that be great? Brenda and Laura, if you watch them, they are Brenda and the Serial Starter on Floss Tube. They have asked people to choose a Blackbird design that they've either been working on or maybe a new start. The first weekend of May, everybody's going to work on a stitch along together. I picked a whip that I have been working on for years and it's incomplete. It's almost done. I'm going to show a picture of it here. It is Lady Liberty. It's the drum by Blackbird Designs. And here's my progress. I did it on Ada. I was not stitching on linen or even weave yet. This is the top, which is complete. And the side of the drum is here. So I'm going to pick this project to work on the first weekend of May. I believe May 1st is a Saturday. Join Brenda and Laura in their stitch along. I believe the hashtag, that's where you're going to follow everybody's progress. The hashtag is BBD. Blackbird Design Weekend Sal, starting May 1st. So that's what I'm going to work on. I'm going to try and get this drum completed so I can send it to my finisher and have her make me a drum. I'm excited. It'll be my first one. Next, I've discovered Pattern Keeper. Now, I have been fighting Pattern Keeper for a long time. My friend Jean has tried and tried to get me to use Pattern Keeper. If you're new to this, Pattern Keeper is on Android devices. It is a, up, a download, uh, an app, I should say, where you can store your progress on the computer. The computer saves everything for you. And especially when you have a giant full coverage project, like a heaven and earth design or an, um, charting creations design, you've got this giant piece. And I like to use a paper and a pen, a highlighting pen to keep track of my progress, but it does slow me down. So since I've discovered Pattern Keeper, oh, wow, what a difference. <laughs> so I've really enjoyed it. I have uploaded my first chart, which is Anzac by Long Dog Sampler. I have been working on Anzac. I'm actually going to show the progress in a few minutes. So Darren from Dizzy Stitcher on YouTube, he works on full coverage. Now we're talking massive charts. 
that was my first chart return, returning to cross stitch, I chose a heaven and earth design, which I have since ditched because of I wanted to switch the fabric on. So I love heaven and earth designs. I love full coverage. I think they're beautiful. And Darren asked me, would you like to do a stitch along starting on May 1st? And I said, yes. So we both went through charts and we both agreed on one chart that we loved. Now, Darren is a lot like me. He likes animal charts. And I, as you guys see on some of my charts that I stitch, they always, almost always have animals on them. I prefer animals over flowers and trees and stuff. Now, I don't mind those, but animals, it's what, bugs, animals, I love them. So Darren Dizzy Stitcher and I chose North American Mammals by Cyril Marchetti. Isn't that beautiful? The tiger or the um, cat's eyes are just amazing to me. So I'm excited. A lot of you guys know I have a special relationship with a raccoon that comes and visits me every night. His name is, John. we've named him, my friend Jenny in Long Beach. <laughs> she gets updates every night on Jonathan, the raccoon, and Percival, the possum. They both come every night. Percival likes hot dogs. Jonathan likes cat food. So the, the raccoon in this picture really relates to me and I love the fish it reminds me of my dad we used to fish a lot so the chart's beautiful it's perfect it's exactly what I want to start May 1st I will not be doing stitch mania I um I know that the group has uh discontinued but the event stitch mania still exists so a lot of Stitch Mania is about starting new projects. Stitch Mania, sometimes people like to do the year 21 and stitch 21 new projects. Some people like to do the number of days in the month of May, start that many projects. I will start a couple, but for me, my big start will be May 1st with Darren and maybe a couple small ones as well. Questions. I've had a couple questions on the magnetic cable ties that I have shown on Instagram. I'm going to show a picture here of a project. See the magnetic cable ties that are holding my fabric back? People have asked me what they are. Now, on Amazon, I've bought two different kinds. One of them was crap. One of them was great. <laughs> Let me show you crap first. <laughs> so I'm not, gonna, I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see it on Instagram when you purchase it. They come like this. Th these are the good ones. They come just like this. You take your fabric, roll it up, and then you attach a magnet on the front and the back, and it holds your fabric in between. It holds it back so you can stitch. Now, these are the crummy ones. I tell you what, the reason being is the magnets, they pop right out. So as you stretch it around your fabric, it doesn't even hold. They just pop out. So I don't like these at all. I don't use them for anything. The good ones that I bought came from Amazon. It is this brand here. I will put the link below. And they're fantastic. The magnet is enclosed in the rubber, so you can't remove the magnet. It can't fall out. So this is what I use, magnetic cable tie to hold my fabric back. Again, I'll put the link to these below. Another question I had, Busy B. Jordan asked me on my last video, number 60, the introduction, the very beginning of the video, I showed a little video of back of this back here. Now, it's since been changed. This is red, white, and blue in honor of my friends in the United Kingdom. And patriotic, when it comes time here in the United States, will be July for July 4th. But red, white, and blue, I've decided today's all about the UK. And I have followed the royal family since I was a little kid. And I've collected memorabilia along the way. So here I've got my soldier. I've got my teapot. I've got the Bastiller Music Concert in London. It plays music. Here's uh, Duchess Catherine and Prince William, the soldier, William and Catherine again, and Queen Elizabeth. So I thought that would be fun to do red, white, and blue. I've got the, uh, he's holding the Union Jack. And so I'm decorated today for the UK and all my friends in the UK. Speaking of friends in the UK, there's a floss tuber I want to tell you about. She's become a good friend. She's introduced me to a hobby. When I was, when I was taking my heavy pain medication, when I started the beginning of my surgery, 
I was not able to stitch. I had to find other hobbies to where I didn't have to look through my magnifier to stitch. So Catherine told me about English paper piecing and she, you ought to see, I hope she shows it on her floss tube someday, the progress that she has on her little um, quilt, I guess you could say, that she's pieced together from English paper piecing. Now I've done the same thing. I've started working on them. I'll show them in a little bit when I talk about my progress. But catch Catherine, she does a floss tube. She is Coco, it's C-O, C-O, space, cross stitcher. She's in the United Kingdom. She's a lot of fun and you ought to see her finishes. She's got beautiful cross stitch finishes. And like I said, maybe in the next couple of videos, maybe she will show her progress on her English paper piecing. So she told me a little bit about it. I was interested. I have a lot of fabric here at home, Halloween fabric. So she's from the UK. So this is for Catherine and all my friends in the UK. <laughs> okay, let's go back to questions. So Busy B. Jordan asked me in my last one about when I did the intro of my video, this chart was standing up. It is Alice Sarah Dennis, 1834. Mill on the Floss samplers. I have excellent luck. I have um, ordered from them. They're a French website. And this chart is so beautiful. So Busy Bee Jordan, to answer your question, this is the chart. And Mill on the Floss samplers, your order, if you want a paper chart, I believe comes from France. Excellent service, excellent uh, company. I've bought in several. I, I should pull them out one of these days. I've bought in several of their charts. So Alice, Sarah, Dennis, to answer your question. Next question, Maureen asked about this chart. Now on my last video, I showed four different charts from Isabelle Vautier and the website, I'm gonna put it here. I opened it using Chrome so it would translate into English. She asked, she says, I was not able to find some of the charts that you showed. Now. Here again, Isabel Vautier. Uh, Maureen's question was about the Marquardt mystery chart that I showed in the last video. She wanted to know if there was any over one stitching. It's not, it's straight cross stitch. If you have problems finding the charts that I showed in the last videos, this is African Safari, or, um, Sampler Africa. Again, this is the logo you're gonna look for on that website. So go into the website. Again, I use Chrome so I, it comes into English. On the left-hand side, you will see French something. No, you'll see embroidery. Okay, under embroidery, look for French designers. Click it. And then look for this symbol right here, the I and the V. Click that. Now Isabel's charts will come up. I hope that makes sense. It's on the left side of, as soon as you go into the, click into the website, go down and look under embroidery. You'll see the word French designers. Click it. And then Isabel's thing will come up. Click on that and her charts come up. <coughs> so those I showed last time, I showed Iver, which is winter. I am so shaky, you guys. So I'm sorry about that. And the last one I showed was the India one. This reminds me of my trip to India. Same designer, that's the name of it, the route of India. So if you guys had any problems, I hope I explained how to navigate that website and where to find these charts. But the question was for over one stitching, no, straight X's. Okay, let's move on. Giveaway winners, now I had, three giveaways. Let me grab them. No, nope. where are they? Here they are. I had two people win a set of green classic color work. They were all green colors. I think you get five each. I have two winners for the classic color works. Number one, Elaine Bauer Plude, P-L-U-D-E. Congratulations, Elaine. My email, stacer5, S-T-A-C-E-R, number five at AOL.com. I'll put it down below. Send me an email with your address. Winner number two of the Classic Color Works is Michelle Cunningham. So congratulations to Elaine and Michelle. We have one more winner. I have 10, I think there's 10 different DMC green color floss. Debbie Scheitlin. 
So congratulations, Debbie. You're the winner. I will send this to you as soon as I hear from you. Let's talk about things I've been stitching on. So the first one that I got a little bit of progress on is Crow's Lullaby by The Primitive Hair, one of my favorite designers. This is what it will look like. It is on fabric Old Salem, which is by The Primitive Hair, 30 count. And nothing is ironed because I am not able to stand in front of the ironing board, but this is my progress. Isn't that fabric beautiful? And how perfect for a real crusty looking scene. I like this. So I was able to get a little bit more done on this one. That is Crow's Lullaby by The Primitive Hair. The next progress, let's see, the next thing I worked on was Anzac. This is one of my favorites. This is the first thing that I have loaded into Pattern Keeper, and it's working great. Fabric is Dusty Road by Seraphim Fabrics. Here's the chart. Anzac by Long Dog Sampler. It is Australia, New Zealand animals. And my progress is here. I worked a little bit down to the flamingo and more on the circle. Isn't that something? I also worked a little in the middle below the kangaroos. So that is my progress on Anzac. I'll work more on this coming up in the next month. After that, I worked on Heaven and Nature by Teresa Kogan. Heaven and Nature? Isn't that beautiful? Oh my gosh, I look tired. <laughs> okay, Heaven and Nature. And this is also, I think, on Dusty Road by Seraphim. I'm almost positive. I'm using the Call Poor Colors. DMC? Are they DMC? No, nope, there's some... It's a mix, I think. A couple DMCs and Weeks Dye Works. Lots of, lots of Weeks Dye Works. One classic color works. And my progress on this is here. Isn't that pretty? Uh, right where the crease is is where I was working. So the flower, um, this flower pot here I got done. So you guys get a look at that. Pretty, really pretty. And it's fun. So this I'll be working on this coming month. The next one I worked on was, I thought I had one more cross stitch. I guess I don't. Oh, I have two, let's see. I have two that I plan on working on, which I'll show in a minute. But let me show my blanket real quick. I remember telling you guys that I love kits. I love crochet kits. So this one is called the Meadow Blanket. This is what it's gonna look like. It is from Wool Warehouse, and you get the pattern for free off of Attic24's blog. It is Attic24. If you Google it, you'll find the blog. I'll try and put it down below. So this comes as a full kit from the United Kingdom's Wool Warehouse. It is fantastic. The price is great. Shipping was great. And I remember watching Jen from Jen Stitching Knit. She was saying she got the pattern and decided to go down to Michael's and buy the yarn. It cost a fortune, and she said that then her second blanket, she decided to go through Wool Warehouse to get the metal blanket, and it was so much cheaper than going down to Michael's for some reason. You wouldn't think that coming from the UK, paying for shipping, but their shipping's very reasonable, and the kit is huge. I've showed it in previous videos. It comes full of yarn, and it's just, it's a fantastic kit. So, I've got some progress. And this is my my blanket, Meadow Blanket, by Lucy, Attic 24, free, free chart. And the blanket itself is um, the supplies you get off of Wool Warehouse. And you'll see Attic 24 on there. 
So that's my progress. I think it's so pretty. Love, 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 love. And it's fun and it's easy. It's a very easy uh, crochet kit or pattern. Next, English paper piecing. So this just quickly, I wanted, I have a lot of creepy Halloween. You guys know I love creepy fabric, creepy Halloween. Halloween's one of my favorite holidays. I love stitching Halloween. I got a couple supplies along with some fabric to go to continue piecing my hexagons. So I've showed this on my, here's one. Let's put something behind it. So here's one. I'm so shaky. <laughs> Look at that crow, isn't he handsome? That's one. Here's two. Hold on, sorry. Two. What I wanna do, I think, is like a table runner. This is not fully stitched yet, so it's a little wonky. This is two, or three, I mean. So you can see, I'm gonna piece these all together. And I'm hoping to make some kind of table runner for Halloween. And that's kind of an idea of what it will look like with all the pictures together. Isn't that fun? It gave me something to work on while I was dizzy and not feeling good. And uh, again, I, I thank Catherine from Coco Cross Stitcher because she's the one who taught kind of taught me how to do it and showed me hers and talked to me about basting stitches. And so I got a couple more fabrics from Fat Quarter Shop to continue working on these. I'm gonna add these and I'm going to add this one. Isn't that pretty? Let's see, I think there's a couple more pictures. There we go. So I'm gonna continue making my creepy blanket. That's what I call it, creepy blanket. <laughs> And I love it. These are just so fun to do while you're sitting watching TV. I had one ditch. Unfortunately, something happened. I was working on a knit blanket that I've been working on forever and I was determined to finish it. It was almost done. I'll show you a picture of it here. I shared it a couple weeks back and I went back. I don't know what I was doing, but I went back to my bed and something somehow the stitches all came off the knitting needles. And sure enough, it started running down the blanket and I tried everything I could do. It wasn't just one, like it was like probably 15 stitches fell off the needles, maybe 20. I tried, I did my best and I, can you believe it? That blanket's beautiful, it's almost done and I could not recover it. I And it makes me so angry. Maybe I should have continued trying, I, I don't know, but I told my husband, dump it in the trash. I'm so sick of this blanket. I was so upset. I wasn't feeling good. And so that is a ditch. <laughs> I just couldn't even, I even tried taking all the, the needles off and pulling it all back. And then I tried putting the needles all back into the hoop, to the loops. It didn't work. They just kept going down, 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 down. So <laughs> I'm bummed. I promised Debbie from Creatively Yours that I would show her because I really want to get back into knitting again. I have a pair of socks where totally famous, I built, I made one sock and I never made the second. So I told, told Debbie I would show her my sock that I made. This is it. It's kind of like a, it's got a beautiful pattern. It's very soft yarn. I don't know what I used, but that's my sock, Debbie that I made a long time ago. And this is the progress. Look at this. <laughs> How did I ever control these? <laughs> anyway, this is the progress I have on the second sock, it's all. So I'm gonna try and see, I've got the pattern here. I might try and restart the, or, you know, get back into stitching these socks again because they, I love yarn. I have loved yarn since I was a kid and I love working with crochet and knit. So we'll see how far I can get on this sock. I'll let you know. <laughs> so anyway, okay, the ditch. Plans. So no stitch mania for me. I'm not going to start 21 projects. I'm not going to start the number of days of the month. What is it, 30 or 31? I'm not doing that. 
I have enough started already and I am going to start May 1st the heaven and earth design that I showed earlier that'll be a new start for me I plan on stitching some smalls I mentioned the Etsy shop little stitcher club no I didn't mention those I don't think the two free charts let me tell you about two free charts so one of the new releases later that I'm going to show is Little Stitcher Shop. She's, do she's done Lambreth and Avalon, which are beautiful. I'll show them in a few minutes. But she offers a free chart that I wanted to tell you guys about. Isn't it adorable? She's based in Italy. And again, Etsy Shop Little Stitcher Shop. Take a look. She has a blog. It is thelittlestitcher.blogspot.com. But make sure and don't put the word the on Etsy because you'll never find the website. I had a hard time. It is just Little Stitcher Shop. So free chart. Another free chart that I want to tell you guys about is from another favorite Etsy shop. It is XX Stitches in Blue XX on Etsy. It is based on the Netherlands, one of my favorite places to visit. Hetty is the owner and she has offered a free chart in honor of the Netherlands King's Day on April 27th. And that's a cute one too. So two free charts. I will put the links down below to both charts. Plans. So starting the Heaven and Earth, I told you about May 1st. I plan on working on Stables by Holly Berry Farms. This has been put on timeout. It's been on restriction <laughs> for months. I find, I, if you guys remember video, several videos back, I made a huge mistake. I fixed everything. So here's the chart, stables at Hollyberry Farm. This is all done and I'm starting on here. Or I've done all this, the grass. The problem I had was the grass was over like three stitches too far and it interrupted the border. So I fixed everything and stuff, but once I fixed it, I was like, <laughs> forget it, I'm not working on it. But I left it fixed. So this will be a focus point for the next month. This is my progress. It's beautiful. I love it. And again, it's all fixed and it just needs some love. It needs to, I need to start that house. The house is massive. So you can see I fixed everything from, I need to finish this. I just realized that needs to be finished, but there's plenty of room now between the border and the grass. And it's time to start that house. This is on, let's see if I can move the light a little bit. This is on Wren, 32 count, I believe, two strands. I think it's so pretty. I love the colors, I love the border. So this will be getting some attention this coming month, for sure. It's time to pull it out of restriction. <laughs> The next one that is going to get finished, next time you see it, it'll be done, is Raccoon Rabble by Plum Street Sampler. Isn't that cute? I've mentioned before that this stitching over here is over one. So Ada Stitchers, beware, you might have a little bit of problem with that little guy. If you absolutely hate doing the over one stitching, which means you're gonna have to split your square, in, you know, you're gonna have to split your square you can always leave him off and still do the whole chart. So far, I've had no other over one stitching. Uh, let's see. Raccoon Rabble is here. This is on a piece of Fortnite fabric. There we go. Isn't that cute? That's going to be done. Next time you see that, it will be done. So I will work on that this month. And that's it. That's my plans for stitching. Let's show some haul. I've got lots of time to show some haul. So because I love the English paper piecing so much, I decided to get some more fabric and maybe after I'm done with my Halloween table runner, I would like to start one with a, a B one. So I got this from the Fat Quarter Shop. It's all B related fabric. All Bs. Isn't that fun? That is so fun. I have a thing for dark fabric, I've just realized. 
I hate to take it apart, but you get the idea. It's all bee-related fabric. So that will be a fun quilt or I don't know, but I'm really enjoying the paper piecing. Patriotic. I have already gotten some patriotic fabric, but I got some more from the Fat Quarter Shop. This came as a bundle. Uh, yeah, it was called a bundle. And then I got this one that is like the Founding Fathers of America and the writing from see if I can open this up a little bit. We the people. Uh, isn't that pretty? Oh, it's upside down for Pete's sakes. There we go. So that's going to be pieced together later on in English paper piecing. I'm going to finish the, before I start any of those, I'll finish the Halloween one first. Okay, let's look at some stash that I've gotten in the last couple of weeks. Now, a lot of the birthday stash that I got for stitching and different things that I got for my birthday are downstairs. I was not able to physically carry them upstairs. And I have some things that I've gotten that I'd like to show you. One of the things I received yesterday, I think it was, was my first club piece exclusive kit from the Cruel Goblin. They're a shop in Australia and they put together an exclusive sampler club kit piece. 36 count fabric, and I'm gonna show you a picture of how it arrived. It's beautiful. Now, if you are part of this club and you have not yet received your box, look away, because I don't wanna ruin the surprise. I, it's, I don't like, you know, if I know a floss tuber is gonna show it, I'll fast forward, because <laughs> I like to be surprised when I receive my things. So this club piece includes two kits. One is a very small one. One is the exclusive chart that was designed for this, this club. And let me show you what it looks like. So it came wrapped like you saw, beautiful paper. Here's the name, School Girl Sewing Club. And this is the name of the company, The Cruel Goblin. They have a physical shop and an online shop in Australia. So I decided to join. It always comes with a small kit. So this is a small scissor fob here that you can make. Comes with floss and it comes with fabric. So that one's really cute. And then you've got the club piece itself. And this is Schoolgirl Sewing Club, the Vowel Sampler, Box One Sovereign Samplers. So it tells you all about it in the back. This is the picture of it. This is the chart here, and that's what it looks like. Sovereign samplers. And again, it's Margaret, let's see, Margaret Bowden, 1802. This is the floss. Let's look at how they put this together. This is just beautiful. All the colors on the back. And then you've got your chart that they sent, and you've got the fabric. And even, they even sent a needle. So this is the club piece. These will come out, I think they said once every three months. It's a lot like the club I'm in by Country Sampler. Country Sampler also has a schoolgirl sewing club. And I know I have that one here too. Let me show you. Again, if you've not received yours, you might want to look away because I don't want to ruin your surprise. Now, Cruel Goblin 36 count. That's what it comes with. The Country Sampler Club, you get to choose. So I choose 32 count, and this was this time. This was the club piece by, who is this by? I haven't opened it yet because I didn't want to uh, mess it up to show you guys. So anyway, Margaret Croft, this was the exclusive club piece for Country Sampler that arrived. And look at this, isn't that gorgeous? This is how they wrap it every time. I love these, but I love that you can choose your own floss too. I mean, your own fabric, what you're comfortable stitching on. So that was the club piece for Country Sampler. I wanted to show a bag that Deb, she has an Etsy shop, Creative Blessings, the most affordable project bags I've ever seen, I think. This is the bag she made me. Isn't that beautiful? I love this so much. This is so me. Fabric. The fabric. I love it. And this is the inside. 
So check her out on Etsy. She is Creative Bloodscenes. On Instagram, she is Deb period Walker period quilts. This is a gorgeous and it's quilted. Like you guys can see it's a quilted bag. But I'm telling you guys, check out her prices because they're great. Thank you so much, Deb. Okay, let's show a few charts that I got. I got a market release. It is Cross Stitch Fun by Keslin. The thing I like about this is that there's black on the front, color on the back. So it gives you choices of what you could use to stitch this. This one's a tiny bit blurry, but this one comes out a little bit better. But I love the cat. Look at him. And the birds. <laughs> I think that's so pretty. That cat's funny. Cross Stitch Fun by Keslin. That's one that I got. And I've gotten two from Soda Stitch. Now, I've never stitched a Soda Stitch before, and I am so in love with them. Etsy shop is called Soda Stitch Designs. I don't like to backstitch, so this company sometimes has backstitching. This one doesn't have too bad. It's the whiskers, her hair, a little bit on her face, and the cobwebs. That's doable for me. I could do that. So this is Soda Stitch Hello Halloween. And I also have Cats Halloween. Isn't that cute? And you can see there's not much backstitching, just the whiskers and along the hairline. There's a little tiny bit of, on the hairline. So I got that. I got Monticello Stitches, the king of creation. Monticello Stitches had 10% off in her Etsy shop yesterday. So check her out. I don't know if it's still going on. I sent her a message, but I didn't hear back in time. So I don't know if she's still going on, but uh, that's one I got because of the animals. Monticello Stitches. Here's two I got from Twin Peak Primitives. Now the chart is gorgeous. I'm going to show pictures because the chart itself is great quality. Very thick, but unfortunately the picture's a little faded. Strawberry Hill. Now let me show you the actual picture and you'll see how bright the red is. It's beautiful. That is by Twin Peak Primitives. The other paper chart I got. Now here's another thing. If I buy another copy of the, these two, because I purchased these from a shop in, in um, Oregon, Starlight Stitchery. If I can figure, if the PDF, version works in my pattern keeper I will give these two charts away as giveaways because I'm going to repurchase a pdf and then I'm going to not use the paper chart so this one is peacock sampler now again wait till I post wait till I put in the actual picture and watch this come to life the the peacock tail look at that look at those colors they're so pretty so this could be a giveaway if I get pattern keeper to work then I'll use those paper charts as a giveaway Here's one, I got the final piece, or the final part of Lindy Stitch's Funky Menagerie, the animal chart. That's finished, so I have all of them now, and I it's on a PDF. And Anna Meek from, she's the owner of Die Handwerk Boutique in Roden, the Netherlands. Now I visited that shop when I was there, it's fantastic, and Anna Meek is wonderful. If you find something, especially if you like French charts, Dutch charts, European charts, Anime can probably find it for you or she probably has it. I would send her an email because I'm not able to get into her website anymore for some reason. I understand a little bit of Dutch but not enough to order off of her website and it is in Dutch. I'll put the link to her shop below. I usually run it through Chrome and it translates everything but there's a pop-up and I cannot get the pop-up to go away. So I have not been able to order through her website. And however, I talked to her. Anamik says, if you see something that you're interested in, if you're looking for a chart you want her to find, email her. You can always email her. Her shipping is affordable. It's very good shipping. So anyway, I happen to have a unicorn chart. A unicorn chart is uh, one that you can't find. You cannot find this. It's out of print. I looked everywhere for this chart and she found it for me. I just, I couldn't believe it. She found it. Anagram Diffusion and it's this chart. Isn't that amazing? I have looked everywhere 
for this out of print. I looked on eBay. I looked everywhere. I couldn't find it. And she found it and she sent it to me. She sent me the most beautiful card to go with it. And I just love it. So I can't say enough about, I mean, I just can't say enough because I am so happy with Anamique's shop. She has wonderful choices in cross stitch. She has fabric, flosses. So take a look at D Handbrook Boutique. And if you cannot get into the site, send her an email with an order and she'll get it to you. She's just awesome. Okay, before I go, let's talk about some new releases of some charts that came out. Actually, this first one, I don't know if it's new or not. I think it is, and it's so cute. It is Little Robin Designs. They have a website, littlerobindesigns.net. And if you click under samplers, it's a digital file. It is called Clarissa Beaumont 1875. Isn't that pretty? I love the dog at the bottom. <laughs> So pretty. And the next one I want to show a new release is Long Dog Samplers Let and Let Live. They actually have two that just came out. The second one is Opening Gambit. These are both awesome, amazing charts. One of the next ones we have is Cory Bata Cory. It is Craft Room. They are on Etsy. I'll put the name of these charts down below because sometimes people don't know how to spell Core Ibatakori, the designer. So I'll put it down below. Next one is Lily Violet. It is Home. I want to say there's an Etsy shop for her. I'm not sure about that. I'll look and see. The next new release, Mary Frances Stidstone, 1843, Victorian Rose Needle Arts. Isn't that beautiful? And then I mentioned earlier the Little Stitcher. She has two. We have Lambreth. And then next we have Avalon. Now they, she has a blog, littlestitcher.blogspot.com and an Etsy shop, Little Stitcher Shop. And the next one we have Cross Stitch Antiques. We have Mary Green, Ashton School, 1846. Another new release that came out just today from Nicola, Hands Across the Sea. It is Matilda Swallow, 1820. Look at these beautiful colors. Now, I don't know if it's just me, but these charts from Hands Across the Sea are more and more beautiful. The more that come out, the more beautiful the colors. I don't know, maybe they're all just beautiful. <laughs> but wow, Matilda Swallow, 1820. Gorgeous. She did a really great job. And we have two more. Twin Peak Primitives Cherry Garden Sampler. Isn't this beautiful? And we have three that came out a couple weeks ago or a week ago or so ago from the Scarlet House. Roses for Ruby. Pretty. We have Entwined Hearts. That seems like a real popular one right now. Everybody seems to really like this one too. It's beautiful. And we have Floral Motif Sampler. Now I do have two giveaways I want to mention real quick before I leave. The first one is the Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher Magazine 2021 Spring Issue. If anybody's interested in my issue, I am not going to keep it. Um, so I wanted to pass it on to anybody who might be interested. This is, uh, my address is on the back, which if you don't mind that, then uh, you're more than welcome to put in for the giveaway. This is the first one. So in giveaway comment, I mean, in uh, comments down below, don't say the word giveaway and just put, I'm interested in the Primitive Stitcher magazine. And I will probably search by the word primitive. Number two, I happen to find an extra copy of Christmas Ornaments, the uh, Just Cross Stitch magazine. If anybody's interested in this, it's brand new and I just forgot to give it as a giveaway, so I'm a little late. <laughs> it is the Ornament 2020 uh, edition of magazine. So just put Christmas, so your keyword that I'll search for, primitive and Christmas. Those are the two giveaways for this week. Okay, everybody, thanks so much for joining me. Thanks for, again, for all your cards, your your gifts, your emails, Instagram messages, 
Facebook messages. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate that more than you know. Like I said, not just for my surgery, but for my birthday and for everything. You guys are awesome. And I, you really make, you mean a lot to me. So thank you. I will see you guys in a couple weeks. Take care, everybody.